All right, so today we have yet another U5000. And the same thing is wrong with this one that's wrong with all of them. Uh, and I'll get to that momentarily. But uh, this was sent in because it doesn't power on. And that could mean any number of things. It could be just a ticking bad HOT. It could be no signs of life at all. It could be a bad Q703. Uh, it could be a bad switch mode power supply chip. It could be a bad power supply, something in the section. Uh, who knows? It could be any number of things. It could be a bad U701. Uh, if this chip is bad, it won't power up. Things like that. But before we really get working on this, I'm going to clean it because it's very dirty. Now, the owner did send in a cap kit and some HOTs as a precaution, uh, but it's already been capped. So since he sent in a cap kit, I'm going to go ahead and cap it, even though it's already been capped. But this thing is pretty filthy. Uh, it is complete. It has the remote harness and everything and the remote board. But uh, I also do want to say that the, the neck's in pretty good shape as far as the... The uh, transistors, they're not all loose. They're, they're a little loose, but the uh, solder joints aren't popped off and the traces aren't damaged, so you shouldn't, shouldn't have to do much rework to this. But we'll still do the rework, get these all lined up and, and flat and uh, uniform and things like that. But for the most part, uh, it is complete, and it, it's just but it's absolutely filthy. Now I'm going to disconnect the neck board here just so we can have it out of our way. Oh, no, this is glued on like crazy. Holy cow, let's see if we can turn that. Oh, man, that is glued on there. Why would somebody do that? Oh, man. This is, I've never seen anything glued on to this extreme. Uh, I don't have my, I don't have my alcohol. Alcohol would, would just uh, turn this to mush and I could get this off of here, but. Good night. There we go. Jeez, look at this. That's insane. Oh, <laughs> crazy. All right, man, that was, why, <laughs> why? Okay, so now that gets our neck board out of the way. Uh, remote board. Now this also has the uh, pin cushion board for 27 inch application. Uh, but this came out of a Soul Caliber, which is uses 25 inch tubes. So I'm not sure why this has the pin cushion board on it, but obviously it probably was 27 inch U5000 at some point. So we'll just set these components aside for the moment and focus on the main chassis here. Now, like I say, it's pretty darn filthy. So we're gonna clean it. I've already got a video on the process, but basically I just spray it down with simple green, get some simple green, get the put it in the deep sink, get it the water very nice, hot, nice and hot, or nice and very hot, however you want to say that. Uh, and then you just soak it down with the simple green, let it sit for five minutes, and then rinse it off, uh, front and back. Give it a few minutes and go back and rinse it off again. Make sure you get all the simple green off, or you'll get a white film on everything. And then uh, let it dry for about 24 hours and you should be good to go. But it's going to dry as we're, as we're working on it. So I'll probably end up replacing the flyback because the uh, top is corroded here. Uh, I'm going to power it up with the original one just to see if it works. If it works, we'll probably leave it in there. But if we end up changing it, uh, it'll, you know, I'll be able to see underneath the flyback to make sure there's no moisture. But uh, for the most part, yeah, you let it sit for 24 hours and you're, you'll end up being okay. But I'm going to cut away, go wash this and come back and then we'll start working on it. But I do want to show the condition before I go do that because it is pretty gnarly when it comes to all the dirt on this thing. It's, it, uh, yeah, that is pretty bad. And I wasn't gonna watch this, but I think I want to just so I don't get all this all over me. It's been sitting in a machine or running for quite a while. The rest of it's not too bad. It's just like a light coat of dirt and dust and grime 
but the flyback and the area around the flyback, because it has static, static electricity, uh, the static electricity around the flyback is much more pronounced than anywhere else. That's why it kind of congregates around this area. But for the most part, the rest of it's not too bad. Now there is this resistor by the B plus pot. That's all, I'm sure it works just fine, but the, uh, the exterior coating here is all worn away and it's also corroded. So because this is all so corroded and worn away, I'll probably replace this because I got plenty of parts chassis to rob that from. Um, and there's also a missing resistor here. This, this uh, I think, pretty sure that there's supposed to be a component right here that's missing. I don't have it memorized. I don't have this location memorized, but I'm 99.9% .9 sure that there's a missing component here. Um, but we'll have to find out for sure. I just don't recall this being bare. Anyway, so yeah, I'm going to cut away and come back and we'll get this all clean, but I wanted to show it beforehand how nasty this is. And then when I come back, we'll have it clean and then we can start working on it. So I'm going to cut away, come back, and we'll see how this turned out. All right, and here it is all cleaned up. I got to say, it's looking factory fresh now. So if we zoom in and take a look, you can see that it... Uh, there's not a speck of dirt or dust anywhere on this, anywhere. It is looking brand new. Still got a little bit of corrosion here, but no big deal. The ferrite core is a bit loose. But otherwise, uh, yeah, it's just looking brand new. And I talked about the glue that was all over that neck board. Uh, keeping that G2 wire hooked up. And if we look here, somebody, from, I guess from the factory, has just completely demolished this when it comes to the glue. <laughs> Why? Why is that necessary? Man, okay, well, anyway, I did notice this while cleaning this up. This is Lucy Goosey, which we'll check that out in a moment. Uh, and I did mention I already know what the, pro the likely problem is, and we'll show that as well when we turn it around. But for most... For all intents and purposes, this is looking pretty brand spanking new. So, yeah, so that's out of the way. Now, we absolutely do not want to power this up for at least 24 hours. And I, did, I do have compressed air, and I compressed aired all this off. Uh, but water really loves to hide underneath the filter cap and underneath the flyback. So even if you're able to compress air all the water off of this thing, uh, like water will sit down inside the ferrite core of the width coil and it gets in between here and changes the inductance and you absolutely it gets underneath the transformer you absolutely do not want to turn these on for at least 24 hours after you wash them so we're not going to do that uh, we're not going to turn it on we're not going to test our b plus we're not going to turn the power supply section on we're not going to isolate it into the light bulb test not going to do any of that until about 24 hours from now so We'll get to that when we get to it, but I did notice that there is supposed to be a resistor across here. Now, it looks like somebody has cut the legs. Now, why would they do that? I don't know if that's a factory thing because this chassis has these diodes across here. This is a factory mod that not every 5000 has. I think this might be indicative of the 27-inch 5000, which is why it has the uh, pincushion board. I'm just not used to seeing the 27-inch 5000. Uh, so these are fa it's a factory mod for those diodes. But this resistor, as far as I know, should be there. And if we ha if we look at this 5000, we can see it's it got broken and sm snapped right off in shipping. That's why it's a parts board. We can see there's supposed to be a resistor there. I've already robbed R104. But this resistor is right there. And, of course, on this one, it's missing. So I don't think it'll hurt anything. So I'm going to reinstall it just to see. Uh, so we'll get that done, and then of course we have, let's show this before I show the actual problem that I found. And if we look here, it is, where are you? It's the this one and this one. See how they, both of them are moving, but the traces aren't broken. This trace isn't broken. And neither is this trace. So they just popped off. So that's not an issue. The main issue is the same issue that we have with every one of these U5000s. And if you're a keen observer of the videos on the channel, you'll already know what the problem is. And you'd be correct. The solder joints on the video selector headers. Look at this. 
all completely around here. This this header pin isn't even soldered in anymore. The rest of them aren't too bad. Uh, usually these are are the go bad. This one here, yeah, that one's cracked as well. All around, it's completely cracked. So nothing there, and nothing on this one. So if we were to remove this, I wonder if those header pins would just come right with it or nope. But I wonder if we could just push this through. Yeah, not with the solder on. Anyway, you get the idea. This one's completely broken and this one's completely broken. So most common problem on these 5000s are the video selector header pins almost every time. Uh, of course, so now if we have, while we're waiting for this to dry out, we can talk about things. So if you have a totally, completely dead 5000, I don't know if this is, well, really 74, 75, 2000, 5000. It's all the same. It's all the same. But, uh, you know, it's not, not exclusive to the 5000, what I'm going to talk about. Uh, but if you have a, I don't know if this is totally dead. It just says doesn't power on. So uh, it could be a tick. It could be a power supply problem. It could be a HOT. It could be Q703. But so if, let's just say, for instance, you have a totally dead chassis. It does absolutely nothing. Uh, it's most likely a power supply is not energizing. In that case, it'd be a bad switch mode power supply chip. It could be R104 being open. Uh, it could be the rectifier diodes. It could be really any number of things. It could be a bad B plus pot. I've had a bad B plus pot many times. So if it's not doing anything, you need to do your light bulb test and verify that you don't have a bad power supply section. If you do, it could be the B plus pot, the switch mode power supply chip, U101. It could be R104. Um, voltage regulator, or uh, it's not really a voltage regulator, it's a, uh, I forget what they refer to Q1, I kept referring to it in the previous videos as a regulator, but it's not actually a regulator, I forget what it is offhand, but it's not technically a voltage regulator, but I always referred to it as such. Uh, Q101 could be bad, you could have a bad filter cap, uh, it could be bad solder joints, anything, but it's really important to isolate your, see there's this black line around here, this black square, this is your power supply, that's all this is. And then this whole area, the rest of this whole area down here and then around here is the rest of the B plus output section. So this is your main power supply. And to isolate it, uh, you lift up this leg of R, I'm sorry, W159. The only thing that connects the power supply to the rest of the chassis is this jumper here, W159. That's the only thing. If you follow the black box, the only part that connects the black box to the rest is this little jumper right here. So you lift this jumper out of the circuit and you can uh, hook up your light bulb to this and verify it lights up and it tests your power supply. But uh, we're not going to be able to do that until at least all this dries out. Um, now let's say the power supply is fine. You do your light bulb test, light bulb test works. Uh, you could have a bad flyback. Uh, you could have bad caps. You could have a bad Q703. You could have a bad U1701, uh, U701 could be bad. Um, you could have a bad HOT. It really could be any of those. Those are the basics for no power. Uh, U701, Q703, uh, HOT, um, and flyback are really the main culprits for no power. If all that checks out, then you need to start looking at the other things that aren't as obvious. So uh, R760, this is R760 right here. R760 and R765. If either one of these two transit uh, tra resistors, if either one of these two resistors are out of tolerance, uh, it can take out the HOT. So if you put a new HOT in and it blows immediately, you want to verify. Well, if it's blown already, you want to verify before you put a new one in that R760 and 765 are within spec. And I believe it's supposed to be, I think, 400 ohms and 50k, 50k and 400 off of. Off memory, I think that's what those are supposed to be. Let's measure them. I think it's supposed to be, no, 33K, 33K and, and 500, 33K and 500. I think that's what it is. All right, so R760 is, it's bent over. That's what it is, it's bent over. Uh, okay, 500, yeah, 43.2, so that's correct. 760 is 500. And then 765, I think it's supposed to be 33K. Yep, 33K. So we should not have an issue with the HOT. Uh, we can do some testing here, just make sure that uh, other than the bad solder joints on the video selection header pins, we should be good to go. Now, I do want to mention that this is, this is not burned up like they normally are, so we're good there. The header pins aren't burned up like they normally are, so we're good there. It just 
uh, bad solder. We very little solder on those header pins and they just crack. So we'll leave that there. So let's just do some testing of, com of components. That way when it comes time for uh, us to work on this in about 24 hours, we can get right cracking on it. So we'll go ahead and test uh, R104. Should be t uh, 10 to 13 K ohm. If R104 is out of spec, uh, the power supply won't function. So we're looking for between 10 and 13 K. The resistor is rated at 10 K, but it can read anywhere between 10 to 13 in circuit. So that's what we're looking for. And we got, oh, well, there's a problem. We have an open R104. <laughs> that could, that's very well could cause no power. Wow, finding stuff already. Well, let's turn the uh, iron on. I didn't plan on doing any actual work right now, but we'll pull R104 out. And just for such an occasion, I have a box or container of booty here. Um, which just happens to have a whole bunch of R104s here. Do I have one? I have two that I can use, and I have a bunch of spares here that aren't the same the same type, but they're not the same style, if that makes any sense. But they do work. I got Q703s and U701s and all kinds of stuff. So uh, let's test these. So. Again, they should be between 10 to 13K. Should be 10K out of circuit. Yeah, see that was 13K, so that one's fine. And if we look at this one, 15K, uh, that's pushing it. Because they're stamped 10K. If you see here, they're stamped 10 kilo ohm, 10K. But yeah, so there should be 10K out of circuit. This one's 13, almost 14, this one's 15. I mean, technically they'd work, but that's out of tolerance. So I may not use these. Let's grab, let's grab one of these other ones. So these are 7 watt 10K. Here we have 10 watt 10K. There's a 10 watt 10K, and you can take these and just install these like the, uh, the ones in the chassis. And should fit something like so. Uh, but we'll test this one. And this one is 10K. We're going to use that one. There you go. So let's pull this R104 out of here because that would absolutely cause a power supply not to function properly. All right. Now with that out of circuit, let's test it out of circuit. And what does it read? Yep, look at that. 4 mega ohm, 4.2, 3, 4, 5, 6. <laughs> R104, you're done. Put that all out of the way, and we'll test our replacement again just for the grins and grins of it. 10K, all right. Well, let's get this installed if we can. That would absolutely kill the power supply. You can hear the water sizzling. Maybe you can't, but I can. That sizzle, if you could hear it, that was the water. So that's why it's important. <laughs> you may be chomping at the bit to get this stuff done, uh, but it's important to wait. Now, of course, we can go We can go ahead and do our cap kit, do our reflow, do our inspection. And then once we get all that done, then we can just go ahead and turn it on and see if it works. But uh, in the meantime, we'll take our 104 and it fits I like a glove <laughs> right in there and we don't want it to sit too low to the board so so for heat dissipation purposes so let's go ahead and just kind of tack tack this in just tack it in just tack it in and there we go and this side we'll just tack it in Got it. I'm gonna turn my fan on here. I should have the fume extractor running, but that's all right. Nobody wants to live forever. 
Okay, so now we have our replacement R104 installed. We'll try and lift it up as far off the board as we can, and there we go. So now I want to go ahead and install this resistor. I don't know why somebody removed it or if it's a factory mod, I don't know, but having it in there shouldn't hurt anything. Uh, it may not, it may simply just not even be needed. And if it doesn't even be, if it's not even supposed to be there or doesn't, uh, it doesn't, isn't needed, easy for me to say, then it's not going to hurt it to be in there if it's not needed. So I'm going to have to use some braid here that I just had. And we will. Get the old legs out. There goes that one. There goes that one. Alright, now we can uh, keep moving my trash can. Alright, now we can get this resistor installed. So that should take care of those issues for the power supply. And now what we can do is let's reflow these header pins for the video selector. Let's take that old solder off of there. I don't like that. Not happy with that. Okay, let's try that again. That's better. Okay. Now, of course, you know, obviously the, it's important, if you can, it's important to always verify the discrepancy before you start working on it. But in this case, with so much that was wrong, uh, we weren't able to actually do that. So I'm not even going to bother trying to get this to a point to where it'll power up and then see if it works. I'm just going to do all the work that we need to do and then f turn it on for the first time after everything is done. And if it doesn't work at that point, or we still have issues, then we can kind of go from there. But I want to just uh, do all this first, and then see what we get. our boy that was cracked and I think that'll work okay those are reflowed and I think that'll do nicely I'll clean it up at later uh, not a big deal flyback pins they all look okay yeah they all look fine now let's fix this issue here and not sure if we can there's another th another issue right there we should look at but let's see if we can fix this here uh, we've got
bust out the fiberglass pen and let's get our brush. I'm going to brush all this into the trash can. Okay, now let's see if we can... make this a bit better. Alright, I think that'll work. Now let's see if it's secure now. There we go. Nice. Of course, I don't want to try and break it again, but much better. Okay, I think that'll work. Happy with that. Let's check it out from the back side. And, yep. Uh, moving it around, moving it around. That's good. All right, so happy with that. Now, what was that other one here? That was right here. Somehow, that's on this capacitor. This leg of the capacitor. Eh, that's not actually loose. I'm moving it around. Moving. That's not loose at all, but I gotta change the caps anyway, so we're not gonna worry about that for the moment. Uh, so let's take a look overall and see if there's anything else that is like, oh, there's a problem. Uh, we took care of the selector header pins, got the resistors replaced, the, the one that was missing in R104. Um, we fixed these loose pads. The video headers are looking pretty thin. Not cracked, but there's almost no solder, so we'll hit those. I hear that water sizzling, so <laughs> always wait. Never get, never get in a hurry, because you'll end up regretting it. Now I'm, I'm not going to do it right now, but I normally reflow all of the header pins for the remote board and all the header pins for the uh, neck board interconnect, and uh, I do all that as well. We're not going to do it right now. I think that about does it for our reflow that we want to do right now. Uh, let's go ahead and test our HOT, which is right here, the horizontal output transistor. And uh, okay, we want a negative lead in the middle, and then it should be 0 0.47, 0 0.48 to each of the outer legs. Here we go. HOT is shorted. Awesome. Uh, Q703, again, is this guy right here. If this transistor is bad, it won't power up, so we'll just check it real quick. I think what you, I think you check this one with, uh, okay, that is this one. I think it's red in the middle. So let's go middle red and then it's 0.6 or so to each outer leg. Um... Okay, there we go. Sorry, it's the red lead on the uh, the inboard pin, and then the middle and the outboard pin should be 0.6 to each leg, each one. 0 0.623, 0 0.643. So Q703 is good. Uh, we're not going to bother with uh, U701. That's only like as a last resort if nothing else works. Uh, but we know that 765 and 760 are good. So the only reason the HOT probably got taken out is because of our bad connection on our header pins. Uh, oh, and our our bad R104, our missing resistor here, possibly the bad video selector header pins probably took out the HOT. So all we should have to do now is do our cap kit, do the rest of our full reflow, uh, replace the HOT, and it very well might just power right up. So I think that's what I'm going to do is I will remove this HOT. That way we can test it out of circuit and verify that pads don't read shorted. If the pads read shorted with the HOT out, if the HOT comes out and ticks good out of the out of the chassis, and the pads read shorted with the HOT out, 
when the HOT reads good out of circuit, we know the HOT is fine and there's something else on the horizontal circuit that is shorted. Now I've had that before. I've taken the HOT out and the pads still read shorted. And I think what it was is one of these uh, poly caps right here were, were shorted and it was causing the HOT to short out or to read shorted, I should say. Uh, so what we'll do is we will remove the existing HOT and verify that we don't have a similar case with this chassis. And again, if uh, you keep, if all that checks good, if you take the HOT out, it reads shorted, and the pads read fine, you put a new HOT in and it gets taken out immediately, uh, R760 and R765 are the likely culprits. So those are the next step in troubleshooting you want to do if you have that scenario on your hands. Now normally, again, if you didn't see the video previous to this one on the channel, um, I'm not using my desoldering station because I broke the, pla the uh, plastic... I broke the uh, plastic solder holder, cracked it, so there's no more vacuum. <laughs> I tried to repair it, but it doesn't work so well, so I have to use the braid until I can find a replacement plastic piece or uh, get a new desoldering gun. Um, so, nature of the beast. And we're going to be putting in one of the customer provided uh, FJL 6920s. These uh, HOTs are much more robust and it takes a lot to take these out. So if you take one of these out, you've definitely got something wrong. I can't tell you the number of times I've replaced a bad 3688. Uh, and because if you look at, at arcade parts and repair, the HOT that's called out for use on the 5000, the 2000, the 7400, 7500 is a C3688. Uh, but these came with a 3686 from the factory, and the 3688 is supposed to be a better version of that 3686. However, uh, I find that I've put some 3688s in here, and they blow, and they blow, and I can find nothing wrong, nothing wrong. I put one of these in, and they last forever. So I'm not a fan of the 3688s. Man, this is stuck in here, I'll tell you what. I'm trying to fetch this off of here. God. There we go. Okay. Now, let's test this out of circuit. What do we get? It's bad. Oh, it's bad. Now let's test our pads and make sure the pads aren't shorted. Pads are not shorted. If we go to ohms, we get nothing and mega ohms. So, all right, I think my theory, or actually technically my hypothesis, a theory is a proven hypothesis. I think my hypothesis is that we had a bad R104 and the missing resistor and bad header pins that took out the HOT. So I'm going to replace the HOT. I'm going to do a full cap kit. I'm going to do a full reflow, fix up the neck board, get everything situated, and, and this one is loose actually after all. Get all this stuff fixed and lined and repaired. Uh, get this all cleaned up with the brush. It doesn't need to go in the, in the sink. We can just clean it up with the brush. Uh, so when I come back, it'll be 24 hours. I have all this work done. We'll be ready to power it up. So everything else initially tested okay. Uh, what we need to do actually, what I'm going to do actually before we power it up, I'm going to do all that previously mentioned stuff. And then tomorrow at this time, we're going to actually isolate W159 and do our light bulb test first. If that passes, given that R104 was bad, then we'll proceed with uh, hooking it back up and then putting it on a tube and testing it. So. I'm going to cut away. When I come back, it'll be 24 hours. We'll have all the work done. Cap kit, flyback. I'm sorry, not flyback. I'm just so used to saying that. Cap kit, HOT, uh, neck board rework, and uh, reflow. And then uh, we'll do our light bulb test. If that works, then we'll fire it up, see what we get. So stand by. It'll be a few seconds for you, but 24 hours for me, and we'll see what we get. Okay, and just like that, it has been 24 hours. Uh, more like closer to 25 hours, but... Uh, we got the full new cap kit installed, the full reflow, we got the neck board completely fixed up, all of the transistors reworked and the solder 
redone on the back and everything's nice and secure now and lined up and all that jazz. We got the new HOT installed, the FJL 6920. Uh, we got the new resistor installed there by the, the B plus pot. Um, well, yeah, cap kit and reflow and everything is now ready to go. So we need to do our light bulb test first and verify we have a good uh, power supply. And if we do, we can proceed from there. Of course, if you recall, the R104 was completely, uh, was bad, I should say. R104 was, was uh, open for all intents and purposes. And then uh, R, which one was this? Uh, I don't know what resistor this is. D107, R105. R105 was missing. Now again, I don't know if it's supposed to be there because of this diode mod, but I don't think it'll hurt it to have it installed. Um, I did also notice that during the cap kit, uh, this capacitor here, the 1500 microfarad for the vertical section, uh, the negative leg wasn't even soldered in. I think that this got uh, hit with something. Something impacted this and it popped it out and the negative leg wasn't even soldered in. You could just walk, 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 walk and it would go in and out of the negative lead. And uh, so that wasn't even soldered in. So I'm hoping that if this does power up and operate, we don't have uh, vertical uh, deflection problems. But uh, I'm fairly confident that the HOT being shorted was just simply a result of the bad power supply and the bad uh, header pin solder on the selector here. Uh, the cracks, the crack joints anyway. So let's go ahead and remove uh, the W159 and then we can get our meter just to make sure that we have voltage. Uh, we got our light bulb and we're going to need uh, two of the alligator clips and I'm going to turn my fan on here. So what we're hoping to see is that uh, our voltage, this is only a 20, a 10, this is only a 10 watt light bulb and it's LED. So there's not much of a drain or a load on the power supply when we're using this. So B plus is supposed to be set to 117, 117 volts DC. With only a 10 watt light bulb, there's not much of a load on the system. So we're gonna end up probably somewhere around 135, 137. Uh, so I don't know what the actual setting should be based off of the load of this 10 watt light bulb, but we're just hoping to make sure that it lights up or hoping to see and to make sure that it lights up. Once it does, then we can power up the chassis on a tube and adjust our B plus as necessary. Uh, I also, while we're waiting here, I got all of the color pots set back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, wiped them back and forth and put them to center. So we have a good solid baseline. Now, most of these don't like to be turned up more than about 25% but I have them all at 50 now just to give us a, a good solid baseline and we can adjust from that point. And the uh, owner of this is gonna have to readjust all of his colors and brightness and contrast and screen position and all that stuff. Normally you have to readjust after I get all this uh, rework done to it because it's a different tube that I'm testing this on. Okay, so uh, W159, we will remove this from the chassis, which is right uh, which one is it right here? Is that correct? Let's see, there's that pad. That should be correct. Right here. No, that's that bottom one. That is, yeah, that's it. I'm going crazy here, sorry. Uh, ah, I lost it. But we have successfully extricated W159, and it is right here. We have successfully extricated it. Now we can hook our lead onto it, and our other lead onto it. And one of these is gonna go to our light bulb, the other one's gonna go to our meter. Uh, actually, I need to get another lead for my negative for the meter. And I just want to see what the B-plus actually reads. Uh, so we're going to use this one here for our B-plus meter. Oh, darn it. Finally broke. But it should be alright. Okay. Um, and then we need to get a, another one for the ground, which we will attach to here. And then we will plug in our power. 
And now all we have to do here is turn it on, uh, touch this to the heat sink frame here for the vertical IC, touch the bulb and it should light up, hopefully. If it doesn't, then uh, we'll go from there. So let's see what happens. We're gonna turn this on, one, two, three. Okay, we heard a little, one, one tick, one individual tick. So that's a good sign. So we'll touch this and what do we get? Ta-da! Okay. We have a functional power supply and our voltage is 128. Okay, well, maybe that is a good enough load on the power supply, I can't say. 128.1 and it should be 117, but like I say, this is just a 10 watt light bulb, so a higher wattage would bring it down to the right uh, 117, but I don't know the rating of what it should be to equal the proper load that the tube provides. But uh, there we go. Let's uh, discharge this. There well, we go. Now it's safe to handle, and we can put W159 back in, so we have a functioning power supply. And of course, with a bad R104, <laughs> you're not gonna have a functioning power supply. So I'm sure that was uh, problem number one, and problem number two, of course, would have been the uh, bad header pin, uh, video selector header pin solder joints. Uh, and then problem three, of course, was the bad HOT, so. We'll leave, leave some of this out for testing when we get this all hooked up to a tube. All right, let's get W159 back in, because I always seem to forget that when I do these. All right. And we have to kind of bend this slightly, because I bent it trying to remove it. Get that down in there, okay. Get down in there, get down in there, get down in there. All right. And as I mentioned before, that W159 is what provides the output from the power supply to the rest of the chassis for, for the proper B+. So that's why we're able to do that because it takes away the output to the rest of the chassis. You don't got to worry about it energizing the flyback, for instance, and so on and so forth. Uh, but let's go over some of the joints that I do. I, on the neck board, I always reflow and rework the uh, joints here for the tra color transistors. I always reflow the joints here for the color resistors. There's these here. Then these three, so this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, that takes care of the resistors. And of course all the transistors and these three uh, NPN transistors, I always reflow those. Um, and then I reflow all of the uh, pins here for the harness, the inter interconnect harness is the word I was looking for, interconnect. And then we do the uh, neck pins if they need it. Or the next socket pins, I should say, the socket pins if they need it. I always do the ground and the G2. Ground is here, G2 is here, so we reflow those. And that's about all I really need. The uh, transistors are nice and secure now, so we don't gotta worry about those. They're not 100%, but they're better than they were. So um, again, you just heat you heat up the, the pad and you push down the trace so it sits flat on the board again, and you flow new solder on it. So. That's about all you have to do, and you can see they're nice and flat, nice and secure, all lined up, and everything's good to go. So, the um, only thing now is to just hook it up to a tube and turn it on and see what happens. We know our power supply is functional, so we're hoping our HOT doesn't get zapped out again. If it does, then we know we've got some other problem, but uh, from our testing, we know it should be okay, because the only reason it would go out is if 760 or 765 are bad. We know the reflowing, the header pins are good, the header pins themselves are okay, the connector is not burned up, so it shouldn't be a high resistance issue, We've got new caps. So it should at least power on. So let's do that and see what we get and go from there. All right, we are all hooked up on a dedicated U5000 tube and yoke so we can do all of our proper testing. I have anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, remote all hooked up, so we're not gonna damage anything by leaving something unhooked. Got the test pattern generator hooked up. We are set to standard res. I'll go ahead and turn it on. And it's important to note that this jumper needs to be, there is, this is the vertical sweep mod, and there is a 
pin, a header pin right there. The header pin has to be hooked up to the white wire for standard res operation and hooks up to the dummy black wire where there's no connection for 25 kilohertz or medium resolution operation. So you want to have that white wire connected to that jumper for standard res operation. If you don't, you can damage the vertical uh, IC. So you want to have the white wire hooked to the pin for standard and the white wire, I'm sorry, the white wire hooked to the pin for standard and the black wire with no connection hooked to the pin for 25. But we're set up for 15 right now, so let's cross fingers. Uh, will this work? One, two, three. Yes, it does. Will it stay running? Yes, it does. Do we get a picture? <clears throat> Mm, nothing so far. Let's turn up brightness and contrast. Brightness all the way up. Contrast all the way up. I get nothing. What in tarnation. I heard something happen when I turned contrast. Let's turn up our flyback. Well, we've got, there's our flyback. That's about 90% turned up though. We have no image. Are the color pots simply turned up too high? Let's turn contrast. Oh, okay, we do have problems because there's contrast all the way up and there's contrast all the way down. Brightness is all the way up. Brightness, what in the heck? Whoa, <laughs> what? What just happened? Uh, or maybe, each position was way off there. Uh, there we go. Okay. We are, <laughs> we've got all blue and uh, we've got some severe uh, pin cushioning. Let's just take the pin cushion board completely out. You can disconnect the pin cushion board while the chassis is running and let's see if that fixes our pin cushion. Uh, yeah, it's a square image now. So this is really only needed on 27 inch. If you have, if you have a 25 inch and you're running one of these on 25 inch tube, you don't need the pincushion board is only needed for 27 inch and it really kind of just causes problems if you're running a 27 inch chassis on a 25 inch tube because this thing you saw the issues it was having there so why in tarnation are we all blue let's try turning our blue bias pot all the way down uh, okay green up we have no green and we have no red. <laughs> oh my god, what's going on? Uh, and we have all blue. Uh, we have no green, no red, all blue. Con that would explain my contrast doesn't work. Oh, I just turned contrast up and I lost my picture. That's with brightness all the way up. Hmm, contrast up. I turned up the contrast and we lost our picture. Something is wonky in the state of Denmark. Hmm, let's kill this. I did not hear it discharge. Hmm. Well, let me see if I can figure something out here. Hang on one second. All right, so something very strange is going on. The B plus was 121.2. I got it down to 117, simply adjusted it, and that was, got that fixed. But while I was doing that, you know, I still had nothing on the screen. I turned the contrast up and it, or down, whatever it was, and it blinked out to just a black screen. And then while I was adjusting the B plus, I got a flash of green, and now I have only green. Before I had only blue, now I have only green. Something is very... Uh, why is that jumping up to 117.9? 8, 9? Nothing's changing. Let's bring it back down to 117. That B plus pot might be dirty, but... All right, 117.2. But I have only green. If we go through the color bars here, you can see that... Yeah, I'm missing red and I'm missing blue. What? Hmm, if I touch and hold these. Oh, the green one's warm. Uh, blue is ice cold. Red is ice cold. Green is warm. 
that would explain this. So we've got either two bad transistors, or it's possible all three transistors are bad, and they and they were. Um, of course, if the transistors are bad or open, you'll have nothing, and that would explain why when I tried to turn the contrast up, it drove the amplification circuit for the video to the transistors, and they either failed, and I got nothing. I, I'm just I'm confident that there is a neckboard problem now because I got two dead transistors. Originally the green was dead and the blue was working and then the blue died. I never had red. Now I have green. So I'm going to go through and see if I can figure out what's going on with this neckboard and get our colors back. But uh, it is operational. We have our B plus steady at oh wow exactly 117, and all of our work and effort appears to be good. The flyback's operational. I shouldn't need, I'll do the burn-in test and make sure it doesn't lose focus. If it stays fine, doesn't drift, then we'll call it uh, okay and leave that flyback installed. Um, we also need to test our medium resolution, but we'll do that once we figure out this uh, color problem. But okay, so we're operational. We have good B+. Our repair is done and functional and good. Don't need to do anything with that. Uh, so we're good there. Now we just got to figure out this color problem. And then uh, we should be good to go in all fronts. So let's see if I can get that figured out and I'll be right back. All right, guys, this is my fault. There ended up being a broken pad right there, a broken pad right there, and a broken pad. Uh, let's see here if I can point. Um, this pad here broke, this pad here broke, and this pad here broke because I got all this reflowed and done and then I in repositioning these heat sinks I must have cracked those and didn't realize it and they were making intermittent connections that's why we had uh, all blue and then no blue and then we snapped on green and things like that so uh, I got that fixed with the fiberglass pen and scraped it all away and flowed straight to the trace so it should be good now so that's my fault I'm sorry about that not perfect that's why it's the amateur channel but uh, we'll get this back on and we'll try again okay let's try a tick two here we're all Still hooked up, uh, pin cushion board is still out, and the remote board is over here on the foam so it doesn't short out on the metal workbench. And yeah, let's see if uh, fixing those traces brought all of our colors back. I'm hoping so. Uh, one, two, three. Okay, it comes right back on. And fingers crossed here, what happens? It's an older tired tube, so it might take a minute. Hmm. We're getting something, but not a picture. Well, you know what? You know what helps? <laughs> Slap my head here a little bit. I forgot to turn this on. One, two, three. Hey! <laughs> Imagine that. It is late. I just uh, about thirty minutes ago. I just got back in from. Uh, doing uh, my three mile walk and run thing. So uh, I'm still winding down from exercise, not right in the head. Okay, so yes, now we have what looks like uh, blue and green. Do we have red? Yes, we do. All right, imagine that. So uh, we were way too bright. So let's turn brightness down, right? Oh, that's as low as it goes. So we need to turn our flyback down. Uh, roughly, let's go there. Well, blues, I think I turned blue down, that's right. Uh, now let's turn up our brightness until right there. Contrast, oop, uh, bleeding there. Let's leave contrast right there. Uh, let's turn our blue back up because we turned it, no, we didn't turn it down. It's still about uh, halfway. Well, either way. Oh, no, that's red. Uh, blue. Ah, beautiful. Okay. Well, there we go. Beautiful RGB. Uh, let's try and do vertical size, which is height. Uh, we'll do... Uh-oh. Why is that happening? We're getting fold over at the bottom. Why is that happening? Hmm. That's the limit. Right there's the limit of our... Huh, what the... This may be a 27-inch chassis, and it may not work on 25. Uh, we don't have... Do we have the sticker on the... It is a 27-inch. Well, that explains it. Let's look at the neck board here. If we look at the neck board, we have 
right here. See if we can see it. Uh, well, nope. Okay, WGM, Wills Gardner Monitors, 27.52, so it's 27 inch 5,000. So, uh, for some odd reason, my, my hypothesis is correct, it is a 27 inch, that's why it has the pincushion board. Maybe we need the pincushion board installed for it to work on a 25, I don't think so, but we'll put it in there, there we go, let's turn it back on now. Okay, comes right back on. For some reason it's not discharging, hmm. but not really a concern. Um, no, the pincushion board just makes a <laughs> bad pincushion. Uh, height still, yeah, I'm not going to be able to test this fully because I need a 27 inch tube apparently. We have already established them from previous videos that you can use the 27 inch and 25 inch 7500 are interchangeable on 25 and 27 inch tubes. You can put a 27 inch 7500 on a 25 inch tube and vice versa without this problem. But apparently the U5000 must be a different animal because uh, it's, a 20, it's a dedicated 27 inch chassis with a 25 inch tube. When I try and stretch it, it folds over on itself. So we're not gonna be able to... And how did I lose blue? Did I lose blue again? What the heck, man? I dropped my screwdriver. Uh, George is getting frustrated, I'm telling you. Uh, it's, the transistor is definitely on. Whew. Yeah. How did I... Uh, serenity now, serenity now. Well, um, let's continue on. We'll tackle the blue in a moment. Let's try with... We can stretch our width out, so that's fine. Uh, it's just our vertical, or our height. Um, yeah, so we lost blue again somehow. And if let's try height again just on this screen, just for the hell of it. No, nope, it folds over on itself. So we absolutely need a 27 inch tube for testing a uh, full vertical size. But that's not important. Important part is done. The chassis is now repaired, but how come I keep having color problems? Is it just a dirty pot? Is it just that easy? Let me grab my driver here. Um, we'll try the blue again. No, it's not a dirty pot. Somehow we lost blue again. Gosh dang it. Well, let me try and troubleshoot again here, see if I can get the blue back, and then if I can, uh, we'll call this a success. I'll do the burn-in test and get this back to the owner. So let's see if I can get this blue situation figured out one more time. Well, I figured it out. Let's turn it on, show it an operation. I still got dirt on the camera lens. Sorry about that. There you go, blue is back. So it was a bad transistor. <laughs> you know, I let this run for about five minutes trying to diagnose it. And went back to test the uh, the heat sinks on the transistors, and blue was still warm from the previous power cycle, but it was getting colder and colder as I was running the monitor. These two were still smoking hot. This one was getting gradually colder and colder. And I'm like, well, okay, the transistor's not turning on. So I went ahead and just put a new one in, and if it still was not working, then I could trace other stuff out. But I put a new one in, and blue came right back. So this thing apparently died right here in front of us. <laughs> so we can add that to our list, and it's still not discharging upon... Uh, when you turn power off, it's supposed to discharge, but it's not auto-discharging. That's not a big deal, uh, but I this resistor that I added to the power supply, I thought that might have been part of the problem. So I took that resistor back out. Uh, and it doesn't appear to really do anything. Like I say, I don't think that was supposed to be in there anyway because this is a 27 inch and there's a mod there with the diodes. It may not even need this resistor. I'm sure nobody cut it out because this was obviously running for a very long time based off the dirt and the dust without that resistor. So I'm just going to leave it out because it may not even be supposed to be there. So I'm going to leave it out. I thought this might have been the reason for the not uh, discharging, but it's not. It still doesn't discharge. I'm not really worried about it. I'm not going to even probably troubleshoot it. It doesn't ultimately matter. It doesn't affect the operation of the of the chassis. So, okay, we're back in business. We had bad solder joints on the color transistors, and then we ended up having a blue transistor that died, decided to die. So there we go. And we have discovered that we cannot increase the, the height any more than this, or it folds over on itself because it's supposed to be a 27-inch tube that we're using. 
But for now, we can go ahead and use the 25 inch. Our red's too high. Uh, the pot's dirty. Right there is good. Let's make sure we have all of our colors again. There we go, RGB. Okay, now let's go ahead and give us an actual video signal from a PCB. So we will turn off the test pattern generator, turn off or uh, disconnect it, I should say, set it aside, give an actual video signal from a PCB, and, oh, well, the TPG is a lot more uh, energetic when it comes to the video signal, so we need to turn up brightness. is too high. Right there. Right about there's our brightness contrast. What the heck? What the heck? Is that an H hold issue? Oh man. See now, this is why it's extremely important to use actual PCBs. What? I just lost. What the? How did I just lose colors again? Or is this a contrast deal? This thing is just. This is really grinding my gears here. Yeah, we lost uh, green. We lost green. And we've got some type of... <sighs> oh my god, I'm just losing my mind here. Uh, what happens if we turn this off? Why does it not do that with the test pattern generator? Can somebody please explain that to me? And it, actually, you know what? Something smells like it's burning. Why is that happening? I don't have this on the wrong post, do I? Maybe I have that on the wrong post. I think I had that on the wrong post. Yep. I had... Nope. 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 Why does it start out okay, and then develop that problem? And I can smell something not right. Hmm. If we look at this, it starts out okay. Nope, it's going back to the... So it's not a hold problem. If I adjust the hold, there it wigs out. Huh. We may have a problem with the U701 chip. Oop, sorry. We may have a problem with that U701. Because that's what does all this. I've had that problem before. But the question is, you can clearly see this happening here. The question is, how come it doesn't happen with the TPG? So the TPG is good for what it is, but you always want to use an actual PCB. Because we weren't having that with the test pattern generator. Yeah, see? Uh, contrast needs to go back down. We are losing our sink here. And we lost green again. <laughs> oh, this is... I thought this was going to be easy. Uh, it's absolutely not. Oh, oh man, that is, that is hot. Whew. That's hot. That's hot. That's hot. <sighs> George is getting frustrated. Serenity now. Serenity now. Oh, green's back. <laughs> nope, we got another flaky solder joint. How? I, well, I'll have to reflow that again. I don't understand because I tra I took the transistor out and cleaned the pads and verified continuity, but apparently there's some type of issue. Maybe the, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm just gonna change all three transistors. For, just screw it. Uh, one of them died right before our eyes and green being flaky. So I'm just gonna take all three trans, or the, I guess red and green. I'm gonna take red and green, replace those and just call it done because uh, now I can't trust them. But look at this, nice solid stable picture with the test pattern generator. Why does it not like the end keyboard? 
Now, the MK board has a different refresh rate, like 53 hertz or something versus 60. But, see, immediately, it's all wonky. Well, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to replace the red and the green transistor, and I'm going to replace the U701 and see what we get, because this is not supposed to be like that. And did we just lose green again? I think we just lost green again. Yep. I give up. <laughs> it's just, uh, well, you know, I'm going to change out the transistors and change that U701 and come back and see if our situation has improved with the MK board. Okay, I have spent the last about two and a half hours just smashing my head against the wall because I kept getting one cascading failure after another. Uh, we saw this was operational and fine, except we kept losing colors. We could lose, we lose, we first we had all blue because I think the transistor was shorted, and then we lost blue, and then we lost green. Uh, green came back and then lost green again, and I had already changed the blue transistor, which fixed our blue problem, but it turned out the green transistor was also bad. So I changed all three of them, and after I got that done, I hooked it back up. When I did that, it fired up. I got a, a it's kind of a weird uh, wavy image on the screen, and then it zapped itself dead. And it went tick, 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 tick. I just wanted to throw this against the wall and say, sorry, I can't fix it. Uh, so I took it back off and I took uh, W159 back out, redid the light bulb test, and the light bulb was going flash, 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 and it was still going tick, 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 tick. So there I knew I had a power supply problem. So I thought it might have been U101, so I replaced U101. It didn't fix it, put the original one back in, and then after turning it back on to try to see what was going on, all of a sudden I heard a zap and it stopped ticking. It went completely dead and the isolation transformer was going, hmm, just humming like the Dickens. So I'm like, okay, something just shorted. <laughs> Great. And it turns out that the actual, the B plus pot is faulty. The, the cap on here that you adjust is loose as hell. And for a very momentary well, for a very small moment, a momentary time, uh, the pot became disconnected from the circuit because the the pad that that rolls or the pad that rolls around on this pot when you move the head came off of the bottom part that transmits the resistance through the chassis. When that happened, it shorted Q101. This guy over here. Let's see if I can get this in here. That transistor right there on the frame shorted it dead short. So I replaced this from a donor chassis. I put a replacement B plus pod in. After doing all that, it came back to life. So after that, I got everything adjusted and all the colors were solid and it was working beautifully. Uh, but I, because I'm using, I was using a 25 inch tube and this is designed for a 27, I got, I just, it didn't make any sense to me because the 25 inch K7000, I'm sorry, K7500, the K7500, 25 inch and 27 inch are both interchangeable. I've done a video on this. You can put the 27 inch on the 25 and 25 and 27 and vice versa and have a full picture in both ways. But for some reason, this 27-inch U5000, I wasn't able to get a full image on the 25-inch tube. You saw if I tried to increase the height, it would fold over on itself. We had like three inches of black on top and three inches of black on the bottom. And I was just, I, I was sitting here for a few minutes thinking there has to be some way to test this further. So I actually have a 27-inch commercial television here. This was gifted to me by an old friend. Obviously, it's a smoker's house. This was in a smoker's house for a number of years. Uh, but it does work and has a fantastic picture. So we're going to test this again on a 27-inch tube. So after re fixing or replacing the bad B-plus pot, the shorted Q101, uh, the, the burned-up uh, corroded resistor from the power supply section, uh, the bad HOT, uh, the color transistors, I lost the third one into the ninth dimension. It, I set it down somewhere and it disappeared. I can't find it. Uh, I also changed out all of the uh, caps on the... Uh, Pincushion board, I have that reinstalled. I overlooked that the first time, so I got that back. I got those adjusted, so we have a nice square picture again. Then we had also a bad R104 that was open. 
uh, who knows did what damage along with the bad solder joints and stuff so uh, this is that resistor I put in that was missing that uh, you know this thing obviously operated for a long time with this resistor removed so obviously it doesn't need to be in there but I thought you know it couldn't hurt but I took it back out thinking that this was the cause of the uh, why it's not auto discharging but the auto discharge is isn't important because uh, it doesn't it's not detrimental to the operation of the chassis so I'm not going to dive into that it's not important you can just manually discharge it um, but yeah after after all I'm gonna take this away after all these issues here not really these aren't an issue after all these issues here it's back up and working perfectly uh, so I wanted to test this on a 27 inch so let's turn it on here one two three I have the uh, I'm sorry I forgot to mention I have the MK1 board hooked up here it was giving us the it was giving us the the interference and bad images and I thought that it was U701. I mentioned, and I think I left you at that point. I was going to change U701. So I changed U701, put a socket in. It didn't fix the problem, so I put the original one back in, left the socket installed. But let me show you what's happening now. It does operate and work, and we have a full square image on the 27 inch, except not quite. So I got the brightness turned up to give you an idea here. And this looks really good for what it is. Uh, we don't see any interference, it's working fine. It looks like it's going to be good. However, let's just get past the check here. All right. Now you can see that we have right now. I have the the vertical size adjusted. Right there, it's folding over, and there it's not. So right there is the maximum. And if we look here, you can see it's only about a quarter inch on top and a quarter inch on bottom. Right there. So. On a 27-inch uh, tube, it fills the screen 98%. So it is an it is an issue with uh, trying to run the 27-inch U5000. Apparently, you cannot run a 27-inch 5000 on a 25-inch tube. It won't work. The yoke obviously is different. So we have the 27-inch yoke with the 27-inch tube and the and the pincushion board adjusted properly, and we have a nice full square image. However, we still have the uh, interference here. If we start, you can see, yeah, see the, we still have the bad interference there. Now, this appears to be a problem with the MK1 board because if I uh, never ever do this, boys and girls, I'm going to disconnect it while power is on. Okay, if we disconnect that and I'm going to plug in, let's just say a 60 and 1 board here and, okay, plug that in. Whoa, we need to turn our contrast down. There we go, and our brightness right there. And I'll have to speed this up here. I'm gonna cut away and come back when this is done. Okay, finalizing and... And yeah, there we go, perfect. So uh, this thing works flawlessly with the test pattern generator, with the 60 and one board. Um, and if we were to, you know, start a game. No problems at all. If I turn it off again and disconnect the 60 and 1. And I have a Rampage World Tour. We'll plug the Rampage World Tour in. There we go. And let's turn it on. turn the contrast back up yeah contrast back up right there brightness up roughly there uh, H position roughly there skip past this <clears throat> I mean it looks fantastic when you get it all set properly but yeah let's do uh, we'll wait for okay so see we still have about a I'm going to say three eighths and I can't see the bottom part, but Dave Moab. Yeah, come on, come on. Yeah, but there you go. About three. Well, that's a bit maybe, I don't know, five eighths. Not, not, it's not that bad. That's all you get there. Any more than that, it folds over on itself. But a far cry better than the 25 inch, which had like three and three. So you can see here, let me turn the actual light on. Maybe you can get a better idea here of the how it fills the screen. I don't, 
I got this refresh rate thing going on. Sorry, I don't know how to, I don't know how to lock it in on the, but you can see it it fills the screen. So if we, well, let's just lift this pry here. So there we go. Yeah, you can see it's a nice full square image now. It's perfect. So it's obviously meant to run on a 27 inch, and not a 25. So we found that out. And I also forgot to mention that in my troubleshooting ventures of trying to figure out why uh, it was tick, 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 ticking in the power supply, I changed the flyback out uh, and it wasn't the flyback. So I'm gonna talk to the owner, see if he wants me to leave the replacement in. Uh, of course, I'll do the burn-in test, make sure it doesn't bubble or, or get too hot or die out. But if he wants me to leave that one in, I'll leave it in. If he wants me to put the original in, I'll put the original in. But it appears to be, on a 27-inch tube, it appears to be working perfectly. But I don't know why it's not working on the NK1. There must be something with this that's special. The 27-inch must be a special animal that doesn't like the 53 hertz refresh rate of NK versus the 60 hertz refresh rate of the Wolf units and other boards. But obviously it's not a problem with the chassis because it works perfectly with these this board, the 16 one and the uh, TPG. But okay, now the next step is to turn this off and let's hook up a uh, cruise in USA and verify our medium res is working. Uh, and then we'll call this fixed. Man, it's been a a rough three and a half hours or so. I was expecting to be done, get all cleaned up and showered from my exercise, and this just kind of bit me in the ass here. All right, so let's turn this on. Oh, you know what? I'm a moron. Hang on. I have to move this pin over to the black wire location so it's a dummy connection then I have to move our resolution jumper over to medium res dang okay now let's see what happens this time okay that sounds better all right whoa okay uh Contrast, brightness, <laughs> each position. That's working. Um, width. I think the width is maxed out. Yeah, the width is maxed out. Huh. We gotta turn our brightness. The brightness is all the way down. All right, we'll have to adjust our flyback. Uh, there we go. Contrast. Brightness back up. Each position. That's good there. Hmm. Why is it smaller on 25? Huh, that's odd. This is acting like it's on a 25 inch tube now. This must be a special animal. I'm telling you, the, the, the 27 inch U5000 must have a special yoke that is, uh, well, I'm also running medium res on the standard res yoke on this standard CGA commercial television. So uh, all of the, I did verify with 100% certainty, all of the caps in the vertical section are correct rating. So it's not a problem of a wrong cap, wrong rating, anything. So. I just think that this is operational and works fine. I just think that this needs its special dedicated yoke for it to work the way it's supposed to. And this came out of a Soul Calibre, so it really just needs to work in medium, I'm sorry, in standard res. But as you can see, it does work and operate, looks beautiful, colors are all wrong and brightness and stuff. I'm not gonna white balance this because it's not staying on this tube, like I always say. But it does operate and works in medium res, and it does operate and works in standard res. I just think the sizing of this and whatnot needs to be uh, left alone to its dedicated U5027 inch uh, yoke. But uh, I'm rambling on here saying the same things over and over. It's just, I've never seen a 27 inch 5000 before and I've never worked on one on the channel and this is something new to me. So now I'm tempted to, since we verify that the 27 inch tube makes a full screen for standard res but medium res we get a it's like the opposite effect 
For medium res, you need a 25 inch tube, and for standard, you need a 27 inch tube. This is just odd. Uh, so now I'm tempted to put this back on the, the 25 inch tube and see if I can get a full picture in medium res on the 25 inch tube. Let's do that just for scientific purposes. Let's see if we can get a full screen in, in medium res on the 25 inch tube. Uh, back on the dedicated 25 inch U5000 tube and on medium res, we've got, pretty much got full screen. There is, uh, I need to adjust vertical position a bit, uh, roughly, oh, touching that with my finger, eh, roughly there. But we still got the, about an inch on top and an inch on bottom, but we have an, uh, the width is fine now. And pincushion is perfect with the adjustments on the pincushion board. So, yeah, there's some type of weird thing going on with this 27 inch that for 27 inch, uh, it works. It, it needs a special yoke. That's all I can say. It's got to be a yoke issue. So, um, yeah, I'm going to leave it as it is. Send it back to the owner. And once the video is uploaded, I'll send him the video so he can see all the work that went into it. And uh, he can give me an answer whether or not he wants to put the original uh, fly back back in or leave the new one in. I'll give him back all of his parts, minus this resistor I need to put back in my parts chassis. He can have all of these bad parts. Uh, actually, these are just garbage, these caps. I'll throw these away. Uh, but yeah, so we already reviewed the problems. Um, and, you know, with this on the 27-inch tube, I, I couldn't get it wide or tall. Uh, so it's weird. I've got, I've got, uh, I need the 25 inch tube for medium res. I need the 27 inch tube for standard res. <laughs> it's just odd. It's gotta be the yoke is all it could be. But anyway, yeah, uh, we're done. I'm going to chalk this up as repaired. Let it do a burn in, make sure it doesn't explode or catch fire or bubble on a, on a flyback or whatever. And, uh, we'll call this complete. So we've already reviewed the problems. It's all good to go. I'll let the owner know what's going on. And, uh, this is a, a new one for me, so I'm glad we learned something. Thanks for watching. Like, share, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time.